when it comes to the pickleball serve rules, is the devil really in the details? Today, we're gonna go deep. We're gonna get into the details and find out. Hey everybody, my name is CJ Johnson and together with my partner, Tony Roig, we help players of all ages live their best lives on and off the pickleball courts. Now, Tony, a few weeks ago, we published a video and there were a lot of comments and, and I think serve rules in general yep. get a lot of comments. So today, we wanna talk about some of those and dive into the details. We're braving the weather today, Coach CJ. A little bit of spitting out there a little bit, but there's so much interest in the serve rules and we know you have a lot of questions about them. So we're gonna dive into the details. I think we're gonna do four today, CJ. We'll see how many we get to, but four I think is a good number. Four, get maybe in. we have a bonus at the end, we're gonna do a, uh, okay. That's right, that's right. Let's do four and do a bonus <laughs> at the end. On the, uh, on the serve rules. That was a serve done with the new PPA rules. Now, if you stick around to the end, we're gonna talk about the PPA serve rule craziness, what's happening at the pro level, and as an amateur, what you need to know, because you never know what's gonna trickle down from the pro game. Then CJ, why don't we start with the baseline? Absolutely. So inside of the rule book, it says that one foot must be behind the baseline at the point of contact with the serve. Which, Tony, that means what? Well, it means in theory, you could have the other foot floating over the court. In theory, and I'll, I'll show you in a second, the only real rule, right, in terms of the baseline and being back from the baseline is one foot down, right? And you can't be touching the baseline or the court at the moment of the serve. So if I can demonstrate that, CJ, mm -hmm. I'm going to show it. So basically, I could have my foot, one foot behind the baseline like this, have the other foot hanging over the court. Let me get my balance. There you go. And I could serve. That would be a legal serve uh, because I had one foot behind the baseline, as the rules say. So now, but from a practical standpoint, right? So it's very difficult. We're 40 feet away from each other. If, if Tony and I are playing against each mm -hmm. other, why risk it? I would suggest that this is not an optimal strategy or optimal mechanics for hitting the ball. So our suggestion on this, and you're going to hear some more at the end, we're going to get to a little more in detail, is let's worry about what really matters. And what really matters is I'm going to have both feet, realistically, planted behind the baseline before I execute my serve. Zero, zero, I'm a, I'm a two this time? Do you remember all the brain damage that we went through to try to learn to keep score correctly? The missed points, the confusion, the fear about calling out a round, wrong score? Well, guess what? Rally scoring has come to a lot of facilities and there's gonna be some options in the 2024 rule book. If you'd like to learn all about rally scoring and get ahead of the curve, click the link up here or down in the description below. We're going to send you our free rally scoring guide. It's a great way to avoid all of the headaches and the migraines from learning a new way to score. Click on the link and get your free guide. 002. Fault, Tony, that is an illegal serve. Your foot is outside of the line. Are you sure about that, CJ? Ooh, that's a really good question, isn't it? The rule says that a player cannot touch the outside on an extension of the center line or the sideline. But is that where Tony's foot really is? Okay, so Tony, what's the verdict? Where's your foot? My foot is actually, CJ, not outside the line. So we've stopped here and we've repositioned the cameras. We've moved this one back to the baseline where you would be standing if you were the returner and making a call about an illegal serve. We've also positioned a camera behind Tony so that you can see his footwork from, uh, from behind that baseline. So I'm gonna ask Tony to go back into the position that he was in previously, which is a legal serve position. Tony, go back into your position for the legal serve. You got it, CJ. So CJ here, I'm in a legal position. So Tony is now in a legal position for that serve. Go to an illegal position in the serve. This CJ here would be technically illegal. Can you tell the difference between those two positions when you are standing here at the baseline? I don't know about you, my eyesight's not good enough to see that. And CJ, is that something that players should really be worrying about anyways? 
Stick around for the bonus and find out. All right, Tony, so another question is about the paddle head and the wrist. And the rule says that the highest part of the paddle head cannot be above the wrist, correct? It doesn't say it has to be below the wrist. Oh, what's the difference? Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, Tony, demonstration time. Show me what is above the wrist. That's above the wrist, EJ. Okay, show me what is not below the wrist. That's not below the wrist, EJ. <laughs> Tony, are you telling me these are the same thing? To my way of thinking, it's a distinction without a difference, EJ. Speaking of distinctions without a difference. Another thing in the rule book is, uh, what used to be in the rule book was navel. Navel. What's now in the rule book is waist. Big difference okay. there. Right, so contact cannot happen above the waist. Yep. Um, I, I, are you going to give us six pack abs and show us I, where I, navel I'll, and waist I'll are? I'll be happy to. Show, give me a ball real quick, CJ, if you don't mind. Cause let's, so it's point of contact, right? It's not right. paddle. Because the paddle can be, you know, as long as on, on, you know, not above the wrist, it can be, be, you know, it can be above my 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 waist, underneath the navel, even wherever, as long as a point of contact here. So you'd have to read the difference between this and this. It's again distinction without a difference. So those are the four details that sometimes players get hung up on. And and our message is don't get hung up in the details. Just make the correct execution. Now, one of the other things is since Tony's here and Tony's got the Pickleball Therapy podcast and he explores these. these we go deep up there in the morning. You mind. got it. <laughs> and, and how we think about these things. I wanted to have a little conversation. And that's our, our bonus tip here mm -hmm. is about illegal serves. And, and so, Tony, take us into that. Uh, it'd be my pleasure, CJ. When you're out there playing pickleball, you know, it's really important to remember the big picture of why we're out there playing pickleball. You know, CJ and I are playing pickleball with each other, and let's say we're playing opposite each other. I'm focused on the experience of the pickleball, not just the experience of being on the court. That's a fantastic thing. I only have so much bandwidth in my, in my brain, right? So I can focus on things like, where am I going to hit my return to serve? Uh, what am I going to do next? Uh, you know, how's my partner doing? What's going on on the court? Or I can use a piece of that bandwidth to worry about how CJ is serving. And I'm going to tell you this, as eight, I've been playing, CJ, you and I have been playing for a long time now, right? We have. I've been playing for eight, nine years now. I've only seen one illegal serve that affected competition in the game. So, CJ, generally speaking, if it doesn't affect the competition of the game, just let it go. We're not saying the rules don't matter. What we're saying is keep it big picture. So I think as we've demonstrated in this video, that minutia is so difficult to call when you're 40 feet away from the player. So unless the serve is patently illegal like Tony is demonstrating here, our recommendation is to let it go. Hey Tony, that was the new serve for the PPA rules, correct? That is indeed, CJ, the new PPA serve. It's a temporary trial rule that the PPA has enacted. They're using it from time to time in pro matches only. And it's a rule intended to try and address the spins that players put on serves as well as hitting it above the navel. So what the rule requires is that the player hold the ball at a 45 degree angle from their body and then not lift their arm. So there's no upward up trajectory on the ball before the ball is served. So Tony, how does this rule, the, the release of the ball, how does that apply to amateur play? Well, this rule does not apply to amateur play. This is not a USA Pickleball rule. So you do not have to serve like this unless you're playing at a pro level at a PPA event in which this rule has been enacted. As an amateur player, CJ, you can still toss the ball up just like that. Hey Tony, what about the drop serve? The drop serve is still perfectly legal serve. If you're a player using the drop serve and the drop serve looks like this, where you drop it and hit it, you can continue using the drop serve. CJ, I know you and I, both big fans of this serve. It's a super easy way to master your pickleball serve. Tony, there's one more point of confusion and that's the let serve. Yeah, definitely CJ. So a let serve is a serve that clips the tape. So if I serve the ball, it clips the, the top of the tape and goes over still landing in the box, that is a let serve. In PPA pro level matches, those are replayed. Every other level of play, so amateur play, rec play, and every other level of tournament play, that serve, even though it's a let, is played. So whenever you're playing a let serve, play on.
Next time you play, remember to focus on the big picture and avoid getting hung up on the minutia of the rules. If you want to know more about the non-volley zone rules, I'm going to put a very good video right here for you to check out next. CJ, it was a pleasure working with you on this video because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well.